Just make sure whatever toys you choose, you ask your vet and you know your dog. This is our next guest, Sam, and Sam is clearly a beagle. And um, because Sam's history is that he was part of a hunting pack, uh, his main job was to live with a bunch of dogs in a yard and to go out on the weekends or uh, in the week and harass and chase rabbits off of the property or uh, for hunters to um, capture. And one of the difficult things for hunting dogs coming to the shelter, uh, well, first of all, I'll tell you the easy thing. We have them live in a kennel with a bunch of dogs just like they're used to. That's no problem for them. We handle them and feed them, also no problem for them. They pretty much, the only interactions they have with people are hunting and being fed and cleaned up after, which is typical of here. But we have a core of volunteers and our staff that takes the dogs out every day to get them ready for their new home. And Sam's never walked on a leash. So we are working with him on not being afraid of that and shiny floors, he's never seen that. I would suspect he's never seen any stairs. So the reason that the people gave him up is they said they had uh, too many unneutered males in their dog pack and there was some um, uh, fighting between the boys. So they thought getting rid of one of the boys might help level things out. So it will be really hard to find toys that he likes because what he really wants to do is uh, search for the smell of rabbits so one of the things that might work out great for him is uh, hiding food in the yard that he can find. Um, you can also get toys for dogs like um, a sheepskin or rabbit skin toy that they can play with. Sometimes wool toys work. You can also get um, all these kinds of rolling toys. Because these toys move, that one has a squeak. He doesn't seem to be interested. Um, passed him by, doesn't seem to be interested. I will say in Sam's case, he's very nervous. Um, Randy's comforting him and uh, he's blinking and swallowing, so he's not that traumatized, but he's afraid of the shiny floor, not used to the leash. Um, so it's taken Randy a minute to get him, you know, comfortable with being in a new place. But one of the things that you might be able to try for him is this toy is a tennis ball so it's very hard on the inside and can't really be chewed up, but it's covered with uh, fake fur. So he might like that. Another toy, this one is pretty indestructible, um, but it ha it's scented. It um, smells like uh, baby powder. So he might like it because it smells differently. Nope. <laughs> and he also might like it because it rolls differently. So it has the movement more prey-like, so he might be interested in that. And if you do get tennis balls for a dog, one of the things to think about is getting tennis balls that are made for dogs. And the reason I say that is this tennis ball is made for dogs and it's solid inside. It doesn't have um, pressurized air, which if a dog is strong enough to break a tennis ball, they can get hurt on the pressurized version. You can uh, see if a squeaky toy helps, nope. Um, there are balls on a string, so you can make the ball game into tug of war. And then there is this toy, which actually moves around by itself. So some dogs like that. So it can be a challenge to find toys that motivate your dog, but it's definitely worth trying to find something that they like that you can play together. Okay. Our next guest is Riley. Now, we have several chihuahuas in the shelter right now, and sometimes people say that they're surprised that we get so many chihuahuas, but we're going to see in the shelter any dog that's popular because the more chihuahuas there are as pets, the tiny percentage of them that end up with no home is the same as other breeds, and, po and chihuahuas are really popular. So we do get a fair number of chihuahuas. Right now we have a chihuahua mix named Mercy. She's 14, you guys have seen her before. We have uh, two tiny chihuahuas that need to be adopted as a pair who are going to be adopted this weekend. Riley actually has an interview later today, um, but I'm not sure if that's gonna be finalized into an adoption. We never know until we actually sit down and talk to people. Um, because she's tiny, she's got a lot going for her. She's seven, so she has experience. And um, I think she's gonna make someone a great pet. But one of the things that people need to know about chihuahuas is that um, although they're tiny, um, they can be a little bit stubborn 
And so you have to be prepared for uh, a house training challenge in the beginning. Uh, they don't all have the same personalities, obviously, but some chihuahuas, uh, more often than not, don't like it when it's very cold, don't like to go very far away from home, and um, you have to think about what is your lifestyle, what do you picture doing with your dog, and does um, the dog that you're looking at want to do the same thing? Because they don't really have any say once you adopt them. So it's important that you think about them and can you offer them the type of lifestyle they need. We're going to take a short break and uh, we're going to be back with some adoptable cats at Broward County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center on Rosemont Avenue. Hope you stay with us.